Uh, yeah, here we have uh, dill pickles. Uh, these are just regular dill pickles. Uh, this year I bought, I don't know if you can see um, on there, if it will focus. Um, there you go, you can just about see on that one there. Um, yeah, I bought a crinkle cutting knife. Uh, it was more of a fun thing, but what I did actually discover is crinkle cut chips, or if you're Americans, fries, um, are the best thing ever. Uh, it's, it's something to do with the surface area or whatever, it's super crunchy, so I tend to use my crinkle cutter whenever I'm cutting up potatoes now for frying. Um, but yeah, so I've got crinkle cut dill pickles this year, um, and I have opened a jar of these ones, these were made at these this batch is the 29th of July, so it's the end of July, um, and they're really good. So I've got a lot of those ones, the first batch, I've given away a few jars as well. I don't know, I've probably got like 12 jars of that, which is a lot for me. Um, and then we have potatoes. Uh, this was... <coughs> Uh, this is from the end, so I buy my potatoes from um, a local shop which is supplied by a local farmer, uh, literally just down the road, I drive past them almost every day. Um, and it's a very reasonable price for a large bag of potatoes. Um, so I don't tend to grow that many potatoes. If you're going to keep barking at me that, you're going to have to take your joy outside. Yes, yeah, so these potatoes, I was at the end of a bag and they were going going a bit, bit on the old side. And because of the weather last summer, which in the UK was very, very dry, um, sort of potatoes, they're not short. You go to the supermarket, you can buy potatoes, whatever. But potatoes from this particular farmer were coming to an end. So we haven't had potatoes supplied by him all summer. Uh, so that has meant that I was like, right, okay, I, I don't, need to use this many potatoes right now, I don't want to waste the end of that bag. So I canned them for the first time and I canned them in chip form, uh, which is really, really convenient because it means I can literally just empty the jar, drain it and pop it in the chip pan and I have chips. Um, so actually, although I never really understood why people would can potatoes because potatoes last anyway, um, I would be tempted to can potatoes even if I don't have potatoes that need canning because they're going over, just for the convenience of having that easy meal after that long day of work. Um, and then, these are all Augusts, but they're not necessarily food, which is why they're in a different pile. So I have my first tincture that I set up, and I suffer from migraines. I've actually got the start of one. On that side now and I'm just dealing with it with painkillers and hoping it will go away and I think, fingers crossed, it will. But Feverfew is a tincture that can be used much like I would with painkillers because it's a vasodilator. Um, so I've done my research and um, if it's something you're looking into do your own research and like you know, multiple researchers Check with your doctor if there's anything, like don't don't use just one source of information you've heard the person say something like me. Bex, pick that particular. It's like me now. Don't use that as, as your source of information. But I for me, I'm making a feed few tincture. Um, so I put this, set this one to go on the 8th of August, and it is in vodka, as it's it's um whatever the, the, word, the word is for the, the carrier. Next. Um, so I shake this every day, so to make sure I spot it, it's actually kept in the cupboard with my coffee cups. Um, so that's a tincture. This, I suppose you could call it a tincture. Um, it's the start of an elderberry cough syrup. Um, what it actually is, because again, when I was cleaning out my freezer, I found the elderberries that I picked last year with the intention of turning them into a syrup. Um, and I haven't, so I put them all in this jar and then I filled the jar with whiskey. Um, I, did, uh, I did that on the 15th of the 8th, so that's 15th of August, and what I will do is I'll leave this to sleep, well, I might order
yours, I might just sort of leave it indefinitely. Um, I have been taking out the odd spoonful and having it with a hot toddy, you know, honey and water um, in the evening. But what, to make the cough syrup, it'll be mixed with equal parts of honey. Um, so equal parts of honey and then you can either take it as a spoon or take it in a drink. Um, I'm not really entirely sure on the medicinal properties of this one, um, but it tastes good, it's soothing and comforting. And sometimes you just need that. Um, and then this one is fire cider. Uh, I haven't made it before. Um, I started this on the 1st of August. Um, again, this for me is just shaking every day. Uh, I actually, I've known of it, but I was watching a video by the Honeystead. Um, and I thought, well, I've got everything. Well, I say I've got everything. Um, I didn't have horseradish, um, but I put mustard seed in instead. Um, so I had most things um, and I've made it. And what I'll do with this is it will get pressed out, put in bottles, and then to a sort of immune system boost, I can take shots of this. Um, it's not also, if you're not familiar with it, it's not actual cider. Um, it's apple cider vinegar. So, so it's cider vinegar um, with orange, lemon, uh, chilli, onions, spices, ginger. It, it's got a lot of stuff in it. Um, it, it it's not going to taste good, um, but it'll be good for me. And then we're on to the food stuffs. Would you? So this is the food stuff, and um, like with the other stuff, I have multiple jars. And I also have got jars of different sizes, um, dependent on how many people are eating. So we have the last of the potatoes. Um, I did the chips, and then I had a load of tiny potatoes, which weren't going to make great chips. So I actually diced those, um, and I found these, I used them, um, actually in combination with this jar um, to make a lovely meal. Um, so that's just diced potatoes and this is stew and steak, this is beef. Um, not my own beef, this is beef I got from the butchers I work at um, as a trial because I have never canned meat before um, and I didn't want to, in the winter, somebody give me some venison which I would choose to can and then finally I don't like the texture or the taste of canned meat. Um, this is excellent, it just falls to pieces. I, I not, it would keep fine, but I wouldn't necessarily choose it for other cups, but for stew and steak, um, it, it just falls to pieces and it still tastes good. So what I actually did was just pop both of these in a saucepan, I drained the potatoes. Hang on, I think that's not to go out. Right, yes, so I popped both these in the saucepan, I drained the potatoes, I kept the juices from the meat um, and heated them through and then I had them with some sauerkraut uh, from, that I made last year and canned, um, well my last can of sauerkraut actually. Um, yeah, so I was happy with this and I will quite happily preserve beef this way. Um, and I don't see why it wouldn't transfer to venison. Um, and then, yep, yeah, more potatoes, excellent. Uh, I've got, I think about eight jars of the, um, the diced potato in the cupboard. Um, and then we come on to beans. So these are runner beans. Um, I assume these exist in America. Um, so the canning is these days primarily an American thing. Bottling is what happens in the UK, but there's not a vast amount of information on how to do it. They, you've got the WI, but even some of their books I've got are sort of limited to fruits um, and chutneys and jams. Um, but now I've got a pressure canner, I can preserve non-acidic foods. Right, try shutting the door and we'll see if that keeps the dogs from being so needy. Um, uh, still here, but we'll just, we'll just carry on and hopefully they'll go play outside. Um, 
Yeah, so I've got a pressure hanger so I can can non-acidic foods. Um, so normally when you think of canning beans, we can these beans. Uh, and these beans are... Uh, why is it not? Very hard to get it to focus. You can see that. There we go. Those are green beans or French beans, whatever you call them. And I do like these. Uh, last year I had them in the freezer, I actually froze too many, and I've got leftovers. So I haven't been putting them in the freezer this year because I want to eat those up. I've been canning them. Um, but I've also been canning the. Come on. There we go. I don't know if you can see them. There we go, that's better, isn't it? The runner beans, uh, which are the long beans with the string in them. Oh, actually, here's a here's a much better comparison. There we go. We have them here. It's a bit dark, but yeah, so the green bean and the runner bean. I've got both of those canned. Uh, smaller quantity of these because they haven't come into their sort of glut harvest yet. Um, I think that will be in a week's time. I will have an awful lot of those. I've got a couple of handfuls up there, but not a huge amount. So I've been doing the odd jar of this alongside these ones. So I think I've only got, I think, six of these. Um, but, you know, how many? Of beans am I going to eat really? Um, they're one of those things you grow a lot of them, they're nice when you're eating them, but it, you don't want to eat them all the time. Well, I don't anyway. So, yeah, so we've got the beans. Um, I've done various rounds of dill pickles, so I haven't pulled out one of each round unless they're different. So these ones I added quite a bit of chili to, so they're spicy dill pickles. Um, I've got quite a few jars of these as well. Um, yeah, I, did, I didn't preserve cucumbers any other way this year. I only made the, the dill pickles, sliced dill pickles. Um, and then we come to sweet corn. Uh, I do also have frozen whole cobs um, to, to eat, uh, but I have a few jars of canned sweet corn as well. Um, it's all right, I don't think I potentially, I didn't, when choosing which sweet corn to plant, I wasn't thinking about canning. Um, so I probably next year will have a look at the varieties um, and make sure I get a properly sweet sweet corn um, because this isn't as sweet as you're used to when you open a, a tin of sweet corn. But it's still good, it's still a sweet one. Uh, pears. <laughs> this year I've only got three cans of pears because of the wasps. <laughs> um, I, I held off a little bit too long picking them. I was like, oh, they're quite big, but they don't look ready. Oh, I don't think they're ready. And then all of a sudden they were absolutely smothered in wasps. So I braved enough to pick a bowl full that did me three, I think it's three cans of pears. However, I had so many pears last year that I've actually got two jars left over from last year. Um, I don't even know how many I had last year because I gave some away. Um, the reason they're tinted pink is because the syrup they're in is the same syrup I used for these guys. So well, what I sort of carved, what I cooked these in and then I drained them out. That's the syrup that I use for these. Um, and these are damsons. My whole hedge in my kitchen garden is actually made from, well, not the whole hedge, but it's made of damson trees. Um, if you're not familiar with damsons, they're basically a small plum um, that's a bit more, it's like got a higher tannin content, so it's got that sort of like, if you were to eat it raw, it makes your mouth go dry. Um, but cooked um, with some sweet um, sugar, in this instance, added to it, they're basically like a stewed plum. A um, bit more work because they're smaller, so you've got to, you know, more to stone. Um, normally I make jam from it, but I've got jam left over from last year. Uh, jam is easy, you put it all in whole, and as the fruit breaks down, the stones float to the top. 
um, but I didn't need any more jam. So that's the damsons, and then these are plums from the neighbour's garden. They've got a tree in the garden, and when they're ready, they let me know, and I can go in and pick whatever I like. Um, I didn't go nuts this year because I didn't. I knew I had a lot of damsons coming, um, so I've got. I've got these two little jars, possibly four large sort of this size jars of plums. So those are these are all sort of stewed, so I could either make a pie, a crumble, or just have it with. Um, custard. And then, oh, by coincidence, we come on to the tomatoes so far. Um, this year in the UK, it feels like tomatoes have been very slow. Um, when I actually look at what I've made, my tomatoes haven't been too bad at all, but there are a lot left on the plants that are green. Um, they will ripen in September, they've got, they've got a whole other month. Um, but I am having to, I mean, I've got some here, this is some tomatoes, um, I pick them, I leave them on the side for a bit just to ripen fully, um, and then I take out the stem, core them if they need coring, put a little cross on the bottom, and then I freeze them, uh, and then as they thaw, if I want to, the skins will peel off, so I'll be able to remove the skins. Um, and they can just be then processed from frozen, you know, pull them out of the freezer and then process them into whatever sauce or just canned tomatoes. Um, and then uh, don't waste the skins if I remove the skins. They go in a jar, well, they get, sorry, they get dehydrated, then they go in a jar. And when I've got enough, I will run them through the food processor and make more of my red powder that I use in baking and cooking. Uh, so, so far, I have made, this is just a tomato sauce, so could go on pasta, be used in bolognese, uh, used in lasagna, it's just, it's a, you know, an onion, garlic and tomato sauce. Um, uh, I've got a few jars of that. Um, oh, this isn't actually a tomato product. This one is a hot sauce. This is cayenne pepper sauce. So I don't know, I think they were just in the shop. These up here are cayenne peppers that I'm hanging and drying to make pepper flakes. Um, these were made with fresh cayenne peppers. Um, so I've got a few, only a few jars of this because um, it, it's very, very hot, um, and it kind of, I know it's not using Tabasco chilies, because I'm also growing Tabasco chilies, but it reminds me of Tabasco sauce in how you would use it, um, just like a cup, a tiny little sprinkle on some cheese on toast, that sort of thing. Um, it's not, not what I would call a dipping sauce. So yeah, so that's not actually a tomato product, there's no tomatoes in there. That is my tomato sauce for pasta. Uh, this is pizza sauce. Um, I was very pleased with how this turned out. It's very thick. You don't, well, I don't know if you can see, but I'm tilting the jar and it's not moving. Um, I've got this, only this jar and two jars this size of the pizza sauce. Um, I might, if I have enough produce in the garden, I might make some more of this um, because I do like pizzas. <laughs> so, yeah, I've got a pizza sauce, and then here I have a vegetable sauce. Um, this was inspired by Rachel from that 1870s homestead, um, who in her video, I'll try, try and put the link to her video below, like in the, in the description, um, she credits somebody else whom I can't remember. Basically, it just uses all of the, the vegetables you've got growing in your garden now, to make a sauce, um, but the bulk of it being tomatoes. Um, my sauce has come out quite brown, <laughs> um, but the bulk of it is tomatoes. Um, this, uh, but because it's got other things, and I did pressure can it because it might not be acidic. It, it is quite acidic, and I did add citric acid to it, and there is actually lemon juice 
in the sauce, so it pro probably would have been fine for all of that. But um, it has got. Um, oh, should I should just say, I think everything. I'm not sure about that one, I can't remember. No, that one didn't. Everything I do put courgette in. I grate the courgette, or I think this one actually, I didn't grate it, I think I just cut it up into chunks. Because it all gets blended down, you can't really tell it's there. Um, so this one, it would have celery. Um, I think I might have bought some carrots, because I didn't have carrots this year because the birds snipped the tops off of all my carrots and then the slugs went ahead and ate them from the top down. So I, I have no carrots. Um, something, it happens with something every year and it's just carrots. So I bought some carrots um, just to add some sweetness to this one. Um, so it would have had carrots, courgette, patty pan, tomatoes, onions, uh, celery. I don't know, I can't remember to tell you, but anything that basically was on my counter, there's probably some beans in it, um, went into this sauce. And this sauce can either be used as like a pasta sauce or if I was to let it down a bit, so add some, some milk or cream or some more stock to it, it would become a vegetable soup. Uh, and then finally, in the tomato thing, I have a pasta sauce that is hot. And I've always marked, so I've start marking some of my jars with the theme because in one of the offices I work in, uh, the two ladies in the office are both vegans. And quite often we'll cook for each other and share meals. Um, and because it's quite easy, I, I am a meat eater and I eat, eat dairy products. However, a lot of my meals are very easily, by accident, vegan. So it's not a problem with me, I just have to remember um, what I put in things. So if I'm making a sauce that doesn't use lard to fry it and hasn't got any stock in it that uses meat, um, I'm popping a little V on the label. So come winter, if I was to make a pasta dish and share it with them, I know I can share it with them. Uh, this one is pasta sauce, hot. <laughs> um, again, this uses other things. It's quite a... I don't know if you can really see. I compare the two. You might not be able to tell. It's quite pink. It has beetroot in it. Um, it had grated, grated beetroot added to it. There's carrots in this one. There's tomato, a lot of tomato. Um, and I only put a sprinkling of chilli flakes, last year's chilli flakes in it, and it ended up quite spicy, which is why I've marked it as hot, so I don't accidentally make it somebody who doesn't like spicy food. Um, and I think I've got seven jars of this, I think it was a full, whatever my full canner is, seven or eight jars, for, in a full single layer of the canner. Um, so, yeah, that, that is my tomato so far. What I do also want to do is I want to do a, a set of, or a batch of, just straight canned tomatoes. Um, because these are all obviously already sort of turned into meals. I want, I want a bit, bit of flexibility in the winter. Um, and then we've got, I haven't pulled down the whole shelf. I've just pulled down sort of the culinary things. In this section. So I have been drying, air drying and dehydrating things this year. Um, I did last year as well but just a bit more so this year. Um, and so I've got lots of herbs for teas but as far as cooking goes I have got dehydrated leek. Um, I've got loads of leeks in the garden. I'll leave some of them in um, I will pull some, slice them and freeze them, uh, just in case anything happens, like they get eaten or we get some you know, freak weather and it ends up really, really cold. Um, but I did read that dehydrated leeks were good. So I've dehydrated some leeks um, and they go on the shelf alongside my dehydrated courgettes and squash. Um, which I will use in stews and things in the winter. So there's that one. I have been adding to my green powder stock. So that's just any green leaves, 
uh, from the garden to go in gaps in my dehydration when my dehydrator is running. And then when I get enough, I pop it in the food processor and turn it to a powder. And then I will use that in breads and just have to look at the jar I've got at the minute on the shelf. Um, stews, soups, baking, whatever, just to add extra bit of vitamins and minerals. Uh, and then we have um, courgette flour. I've not used this yet, um, but because I, I don't need any more just standard dehydrated courgette on the shelf, I've got sliced, diced and grated courgette dehydrated, and I've got diced pat pan dehydrated. And I have got almost a jar and a half of each left over from last year, and I made three jars of each last year. So that should be enough to see me through to next year. So I, rather than making it and having leftover, I know we will always have a glut of courgettes here, whether I've grown them or somebody in the, the neighbouring village has grown them. People are always offering courgettes to people. Um, so I can replenish that next year. Um, so anything that I have been dehydrating, I have been turning into a powder as courgette flour. Um, and this, in theory, can be used to thicken sauces uh, and things. And one of my friends recently um, had to go gluten free, and it means that I've got an alternative without having to consciously go out and buy gluten free flour. Uh, and then finally, I have celery leaf. Uh, I've grown my own celery this year, and whenever I use it in one of these sauces, I cut all the leaves off, they go in the dehydrator, and then I have celery leaf, which will be lovely to use as a sort of a celery flavouring um, when I'm making stews throughout the winter. Um, and I've just spotted something else uh, that is. There we go. Um, actually, I need to pop a weight back in here. Um, I said I used the last jar of sauerkraut. So I've got another round of sauerkraut on the go. Um, I did have to, I had to pull the weight out because my weight was actually a, um, a metal scales weight and the bag it was in was burst. Um, so I pulled it out because obviously I didn't want water all over the, uh, the old metal weight. Um, but I need to pop something else in there just to put, push it all back down. Um, but this was started on the 28th and I normally let it go for, for two weeks and then I will can it. Um, so yeah, I think, oh, and then, I say, I think that's all I've been doing. Um, I've also been grating and bagging and then freezing courgette, um, so that I can use it in making pakoras or zucchini breads, um, or if I've still got tomatoes in the freezer and I haven't got fresh courgette and I want to make some more sauces, um, I've got that in the freezer. Uh, Uh, I've got chilies drying. Um, can't think of anything else off the top of my head, but I'm sure that there are things. Oh, I made a, a batch of zucchini bread to go in the freezer. Um, oh, I've been making gnocchi. That was another thing I did to use at the last of the potatoes, um, and that's in the freezer. Yes, basically every everything I I harvest or I see on the side um, is being slowly turned into things that can be used throughout the year. Um, the next on my my list of things that that needs sorting is yeah I harvested my little row of potatoes. I said I don't grow potatoes, so I don't need to. I might grow potatoes again next year. I put from that bag of potatoes, there were 10 tiny ones that were about the size of seed potatoes that were sprouting. And I planted those on the edge of my garden. Um, and I just dug them up. Um, however, something has been nibbling on my potatoes. Uh, some of it's obviously slug damage, some of it has little tiny teeth. I know I've got bowls and stoats and not stoats. Shrews, sorry. There are stoats that not in my garden, but I haven't seen them in my garden. Um, bowls and shrews, and I've also seen a wood mouse. 
So I know that there are little critters in my garden and some of them have been munching on the potatoes. So I'm in the process, the bucket of potatoes is by my door. Every time I come in the door, I have a rummage through and I find ones without damage. And if they haven't got damage, they come in the house and they go into the crate. There's a crate in which I'm curing the potatoes because I, I lifted them before the skin sets in. Um, so they need to cure before I can store them, otherwise they might get damaged and go moldy. So I'm in the process of sorting that, but it does mean I'm going to be left with a load of potatoes that won't store. So, I will be turning more of them into chips, but I might also make another batch of gnocchi. Um, but, I've really enjoyed digging the spuds. I, I, I've, people have told me, and I've seen it, and like the best harvest is the potato harvest. But it truly is. It's really fun when you're digging and you see these couple of tiny potatoes and you're like, oh. And then you see a massive potato. And I've got a few massive potatoes. And, and some of them aren't even damaged as well. So they're going to score. Um, so I think I might actually, rather than just, oh, I've got these left over, I might actually intentionally plant some potatoes next year. Um, because it's just fun. And I've got the space, so that's what I think I, think I will do. Um, but yes, that's on my list to do is also to yeah, go through those, those potatoes and do another picking of runner beans and decide what I'm doing with those. I, I might freeze them rather than, than canning the runner beans. Um, uh, we'll see, so I think I have got, looking at my freezer, I think I've got a reasonable amount of space for everything that needs to go in there. Um, yeah, I think I've been really kind of caught up on on what I've been doing this last month. I've just not had the sort of um, the motivation and the drive to film it um, and do it um, because, let's face it, the kitchen is chaos at the best of times, um, and the, the level of chaos it's reached recently um, isn't something that I could could control on camera. Um, um, yes, yeah, so I hope, hope to actually manage to, to film a bit more for you. Um, I will do a September garden tour. Um, and oh, that's the other thing. Yeah, um, the other thing I've been slowly preserving is the uh, broccoli that's been coming. I've got a sprouting, green sprouting variety of broccoli which has just come in, but there is never enough for a meal in one hit at the minute. I'm sure, like, give it a week or two and I will have so much sprouting broccoli. Um, but at the moment, it's just been like a, a couple of floor ups at a time, so I've literally just been popping them in a bag in the freezer. Um, so I've got a little baggie of broccoli in the freezer. Uh, yeah, I think, I think that's it. I'm sure there's, there's something else I'll suddenly remember. Um, but yes, so I will do a garden tour um, and there are a few other things I need to do. Like I need to finish my nettle video um, because I keep on looking at those nettles um, that I was, I was processing some nettles to get the fibre out of them. Um, and... There are a few things that I need to do that I can film to show you how I do them um, that will get get done along the way. So if you've if you've watched me ramble on about the food in my cupboard, uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Um, I hope you you are enjoying my little videos, and I'll see you next time.